Do dogs cry? Well, if you're asking about tearing, then the answer is yes. But if you're asking if the tearing is caused by emotions like sadness or joy, then the answer is maybe. I'm Dr. Ryan, a veterinarian and a veterinary behavior residency graduate. Dogs can tear up. We know that for sure because if they don't, then they might actually have severe issues with their eyes, like dry eyes, KCS. That condition can actually be very severe and even cause irreversible damage to their eyes. If a dog has an eye inflammation or anything else, kind of like in people that might cause the eyes to tear up more, then you'll see a lot of discharges coming out of the eye and usually they might even be very black in color because of high iron content in them. But if you're here, you're probably wondering if emotions can cause them to cry. A week ago, a study was published in the scientific literature about this exact topic. I will say that this type of study is not the best one. The way that it was published doesn't actually contain all the data that's needed in order to have a critical way to review it. So it might be good, it might be bad, we just can't really tell for sure. It is peer-reviewed, so hopefully those that reviewed the paper before it was published actually checked the data and said it was right, but take this thing with a grain of salt. Link to the paper down below. Oh, and if you're already there, please click the like and subscribe if you feel that you gained something from this video and it will help my YouTube channel as well. Thank you. So the study's title is Increase of Tear Volume in Dogs After Reunion with Owners is Mediated by Oxytocin. Oxytocin is many times referred to as the love hormone. It's something that's produced a lot when a baby is born or between a mother and her children, and even maybe between two adults that are in love with each other. We believe that this hormone kind of creates the initial needed bonding between two people, but we also know that it exists in many, many, many other species as well. The researchers from Japan used something called the Shermer tear test. Basically, it's a piece of paper that you put under the dog's eyelid and it absorbs the moisture or actually the tears from the eye itself. And after a few seconds, you can tell how much was absorbed. We use that technique in order to find out if a dog has that dry eye condition, the KCS. The researchers did a few things in this study. The first part was done at home. They did the tear test in the presence of the owners before they left and used it as a baseline. And then they measured it again within five minutes of the owner's return to home after five to seven hours of them leaving the house. So that was the reunion stage. And they found out that after the owners came back home, there was a lot more of the steering than was in the baseline. In the second part, they measured the volume of the tears in the dog's after reunion with their owners and after reunion with someone that the dog knew but wasn't their owner. So with familiar people that weren't their owners. And not surprisingly, the tear volume was actually a lot higher in the reunion with the owners versus the reunion with familiar people that weren't the owners. Now, because oxytocin does have an effect on bonding and is actually known to be connected with tearing, they wanted to see what happens if they actually take oxytocin and put it in dog's eyes and versus putting a different ointment that actually has same protein as the oxytocin, but that was modified to change its structure. The real oxytocin increased the volume of the tears. I will say that the oxytocin part is kind of confusing because I don't really know if maybe the oxytocin itself just causes a mechanical reaction, like is it bothering the eye? Or maybe it just affects something in the tear ducts themselves. So, you know, the fact that the oxytocin increased the tearing doesn't necessarily mean that oxytocin that is produced by the body itself 
is the cause for tearing. So we can't really say that the tearing was because the dog was in love with their owners. Also, we can't really say for sure that the fact that they teared more with their owners or in the reunion with their owners versus seeing familiar but not owner dogs is a proof that they actually cry in joy because, you know, reunion, the dog is jumping all around or maybe not even jumping but fidgeting because he's happy that his owner came back home and this movement might actually cause more tearing or more volume uh, of tears in the eyes. But let's say that everything here is right and they did actually tear with joy for their owner's return. Why did they actually do it? So joy, right? Not, not sadness. They're happy that their owners came back home. But why would tearing be a good thing for the bonding between a person and their dog? So the author's hypothesis was that this actually strengthened the bond between the owner and the dog. Now to test that, the researchers showed people photos of dogs with and without artificial tears. They asked them to rate how much they wanted to take care of that dog. The dogs with the tears ranked higher, meaning that people wanted to take care of those dogs more than the dogs without the tears. So they said that maybe this is a way to strengthen the human-animal bond and kind of make people want to take care of the dog even more. Now, of course, we're talking about evolution. We're not talking about the dog is actually thinking, oh, if I'm going to cry, they're going to take care of me. Uh, that, that, that doesn't happen. Basically, this is a cool study, but probably not one of the best studies that I've read lately. If you want to check something else that's cool and is also evidence-based science, check out this video.